Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jay Du coming to you for the Great Big Giveathon. You made it. I see Hope already here on Facebook. She said, I finally found it. Well, we found you, Hope. And we're giving a lot of hope to a lot of people tonight by our fundraising and donations. Thank you in advance already for what you've already done, pledged to do, and are about to do. And over the course of the next hour, let me lead and guide you through some of the great fun that we're going to have and lots of prizes and giveaways. There's so many great big ideas that we're going to share with you tonight. I'm so happy to have you here. Once again, my name is Jay Dew. Maybe you've seen me around town in South Carolina before, but I'm introducing myself to you for the first time if you're elsewhere. So I'm going to be your host tonight, and anytime Jay Dew's and gifts to give away. We're going to do some live right here tonight. Some of them are worth thousands of dollars, and we're also going to be talking and giving away a few things to you who are joining us via Facebook. Thank you for those of you who have pre-registered who are watching us on our website. Just so you know, we might reference what's going on on Facebook, and if we do and you'd like to join us over there, we got a lot of giveaways to give away on Facebook so you can enjoy things there. And as I turn around, let's take a look at this thermometer. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, the reason that we're here is we are here to raise $150,000 for fostering great ideas. We've got a great big idea that we want to hit 25,000 or so more dollars here tonight. So if any of you give, we're gonna see it pop up right here. I hope I can catch it. Let me know. Okay, we've got this bell. So let's, let's hear the bell. Let's hear the bell. Okay, hopefully you heard that. If you give, we're gonna try to shout out to you guys throughout the night tonight. So let me tell you a little bit more about what's going on. We have right here in studio, our founder, our president, with him a little bit, and uh, I want to hear about some of the great ideas several of you are a part of. So I'm checking in right here on our Facebook thread and our feed. So if you are out there somewhere and you're participating via Facebook right now, why don't you put where you're check checking in from? So I'm in Greenville, South Carolina, where some of the greatest ideas have started for fostering great ideas. Some of you I've heard are all the way in mountain time out there in Colorado. And I'm sure there's hundreds of you here or there or in between. Welcome to everybody tonight. So we've got some uh, numbers. Why don't we put it back up on the screen here? Oh, we've got it here. Text FGI for kids to 41444. So that is going to trigger your option to give, to donate, to pledge toward our great work tonight. So I want everybody to go ahead and do that right now. It is not an automatic gift yet. You still have some prompts to go through to figure out what number is right for you, your organization, or your family. But go ahead. I'm going I'm to do it right here in front of us right now. So FGI number four, kids. And that number is 41444. We've got it right here. Go ahead and do that. I'm going to encourage you to get involved with the giving tonight. Because, ladies and gentlemen, not only are we going to give away some great things, so let me get into some raffles here in just one second, but also we're helping the children who need it most. And isn't that really what it's all about? That was the first great idea 10 years ago, and so we're excited to have you a part of the mission and the vision of what we need tonight. $25,000 more to continue our great programming and expand some of the things that we're doing. So let's get into a few gifts and giveaways. All right, so here it is. Uh, oh, and I love that. So Pat Harden is out there who says that uh, I've made a gift in honor of Deborah. Why don't you do that? I think that's a lovely idea. Giving an honor or memory of someone that you know or care about. I think this is a great time as well to jump in and uh, maybe uh, tag somebody who's not in here yet and uh, encourage them to give. Okay, they're telling me I better speed up. So let's give away some of these prizes. Ladies and gentlemen, the first 10 people, the first 10 people to give at any amount you're going to go home with an opportunity for the Brick Street Cake. So if you know anything about where it all started, Brick Street Cafe was the original. Oh, we got one. Sarah Crop, congratulations, and thank you. We're putting you in the hat right here. What the opportunity is, is to, I'm looking for 10 people right now. We're going to check the tape and roll it back and make sure the first 10 people are going in the pot for this. Oh, Katie, congratulations. Yes, ma'am. So it's 50-50 right now. Somebody's got to take the cake home. Okay, so another one, we have a great big trip planned for you. I'll talk more about it later. It's to Breckenridge, Colorado. Oh, they're telling me again. We got another one. Mark, we got you down. We got you down, my friend. Thank you so much, Mark. 
a great big trip, a couple of nights there to Breckenridge, Colorado. There's a threshold for that gift. If any of you are looking to give around the $600 plus mark or already have, we definitely have you already in the bank. Okay. And uh, Wendy's Frosty, ladies and gentlemen, especially on Facebook, we got lots of these to give away. Our friends over there at the Dave Thomas Foundation, of course, he was the founder of Wendy's, are doing great things for kids in foster care, as well as, oh, there's more. If you guys would slow down for a minute, I'm trying to talk. We're giving, just never mind, just keep it coming, keep it coming. So not only uh, yeah, for foster care, also adoption, we want to make sure every child um, has a family. And so, okay, okay. I'm trying to call everybody. Thank you, whoever you are who interrupted me. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, we're going to look at three great ideas that we've had over the course of 10 years. We know lots of you are involved with lots of programming. Let us know which programs you're a part of. Thank you one more time to David Wood. But at this time, what I encourage you to do, I'm going to take a minute and transition and get uh, David in studio with me. We're going to have a great conversation about how this kind of all started and what some of his first great ideas were. So stick with me and go ahead and give. Go ahead and text that number, 41444, and the text message is FGI for kids. And if you'd like to switch over now, for those of you pre-registered watching us on the, on the website, the Facebook page is a great place to get interactive because we have Lindsay over there in their soundproof room and soundproof chamber interacting and giving away some prizes. Thank you for those of you who already participated in the last couple of days and hours here on Instagram as well. So I'm going to transition. Don't go anywhere. Find someone who's not yet in that thread to tag. Join us on Facebook. Go ahead and hit that watch party video or share it with your friends. And I'm coming back with our founder and president, Mr. David White, in just one minute. Thanks for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, as promised, I'm here in studio with our founder and CEO, Mr. David White. David, thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for having me. <laughs> glad you're glad you're here. You did great in that first segment. Thank you. I Thank think you. that Brick Street Cafe cake is gonna go. Oh, very good. Very, well, we have one here because I heard that's a little where later it all on. My children matter. They matter a lot, and they're struggling like crazy while they're in foster care. So we created three relationship programs for that. We said, if we can help them in relationship throughout their entire experience, we can really solve a lot, right? Right. Oh, yeah. The first one was a mentor program. Why not? Mentor programs work all around the world. And that sealed the deal. 20 youth raised their hand. I would love to have someone in my life. And now we solidly say, as long as you're in care and thereafter, you will have a constant volunteer. Beautiful concept. The second idea was simply this. It was... I want to go to college. Mm. My right. children want to go to college. I'm sure that sooner or later, if they become literate, they're little. Yeah, you're right still now. little. I'm, yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. Mine, are, <laughs> mine are cap and gown. Yeah. But why not give that same opportunity to these kids? Of course. Um, so we create college fellows. Mm -hmm. We believe you can be mentored and you can make it into college, and we'll help you get there and guide you along the way. And the third thing that we said we can help these children in relationship is to build a, to go back a little bit and to say, academically, you can make it too. Why not help them with tutors? So, a tutor match. So let's dive into that, cool. that great idea called yeah. tutor match. Yeah. What, 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 tell us more about the need there and how, how it might work. It's incredible, J.D. When I developed Fostering Great Ideas, the first thing I saw was the statistics on children in foster care while they were academically struggling. Why were they struggling, you think? Well, uh, obviously, everything else is in transition. Everything is in transition. Over half the kids nationally in foster care have been in foster care in half the school district. 
Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, right? Wow. Yeah. They're behind, and when they're in care, they're called the foster kid, right? Mm -hmm. Nationally, the standardized testing for these kids, if you look at California, the largest state, the largest uh, peer review journal, all that blah, 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 said that most kids, about 50% of them will become, will be proficient in their standardized test in English. Yes. Children in foster care, 23% wow. are proficient. What a drop. What a drop. We said we can do something about it. So why don't we jump in right now to see one of our former foster youth and her personalized struggle with her academics. Here we go. It was scary, Un the unknown. I was still a child, although a troubled teenager, of course, that um, went through a lot. I remember asking for my mom or my grandmother, you know, just to see where they, do they know where, where I was and stuff. I didn't get to call them until 10, 11 PM that night. And um, it was scary. It was um, made to feel like you're a teenage criminal or you're like, shame on you, shame on you. Academics was um, non-existent. Um, I got shipped to, almost five hours away it was like here you go she's in this girl's group home and she needs to go to school tomorrow and you're going to be in this class this class this class this class and here's your sheet and here you go the bus leaves at 7 45 you better be standing outside that gate waiting for me being a foster child um as a teen um that is the last thing on your mind is doing your homework. I was in constant survival mode. I needed to survive to make it through the next day. Thinking about my education wasn't a source of survival because to think about that means that I have to put myself in that strange classroom every day that I already don't belong in. Not because anybody told me that, that's just how I felt when I walked in. And um, feeling judged without anybody ever saying a word to you. It's all the things that me as a foster teen make, made up in my head that made me feel less than and made me feel like I need to survive to the next day just so I can get out of here. When I get out of here, I'll just worry about all that later. It was scary, un the unknown. I was still a child, although. Wow, David, that seemed really tough for Megan. I can't even imagine it myself. So, I mean, what's the solution to something like this? The solution is to... She is competent, she's capable, and she can succeed academically. There's no excuse for us as a community to not see that. These children are just like our own. And if we provide a tutor and we provide volunteer tutors who come into these children's lives and say, Megan, I will see you every week and I will restore your confidence, your ability. I'll work with your foster parent or your group home. I'll work with your teacher. And together, Megan, together, we're gonna beat this test. We're gonna beat this language problem we're having. We're gonna beat this academic issue of algebra. We're gonna beat it together, together. That's tutor math. Love it. So I think at this time, what we want you guys to do at home is why don't you shout out your favorite teacher or someone who's tutored you? I'll tell you mine. David, you know, when I was in second grade, I had a wonderful teacher. I was overseas at the time. Her name was Mrs. Clark. All right. So Mrs. Clark, if you're oh, out yeah. there, but why don't you go ahead and shout out to your favorite teacher or tutor? This time, we're going to transition, and we're going to get that perspective from a parent, a foster parent, and uh, who's going to talk a little bit about what it's like for them to deal with a child in their care who's dealing with academic issues. We have a fantastic tutor who we love, and right, right now they're different. all through Zoom um, because of it's COVID, a little bit different. but I don't know. We're in the right it place. has definitely taken the pressure off me of having to find someone 
um, like putting an ad out or putting a Facebook message no, out or just me trying to find someone basically uh, fostering can... great ideas has done that you, you guys have done all the work and we get matched with a tutor. We tell, you know, them our needs, what grade our children are in, what they're struggling with. And then we just wait to hear back. At first, she was a little more reserved and didn't really want to participate because she felt it was more like school. Um, but then our tutor got to know her and she made it more about getting to know her first instead of just jumping right into the tutoring and making it like school. She established a relationship with her and they had that rapport. And it, then it became something that she looked forward to, our foster daughter looked forward to every week. And then at school, we started seeing, you know, the teacher would send home notes saying, hey, she's being more engaged. She's raising her hand. She's participating in read alouds where she wasn't doing that um, when we first enrolled her, you know, in the new school because she wasn't confident and she was reserved. And then after having, you know, a tutor for about two months, I would say um, once a week, it just a world of difference at school, even where her teacher was noticing and We have a fantastic tutor who. Well, David, it really seems as though the tutor relationships really have a big impact, not just on the student, the child, but also on the family that's giving them care. Continue her story. Not only foster parents, but the child, it is a place for me that I call home 15 years later. If I would have had this 15 years ago, of course my life would have been differently. I wouldn't have experienced a lot of the, I wouldn't have a GED. Just be honest, I would have had a tutor and I would have been matched with somebody that's um, voluntarily serving the foster child. They're doing something out of the kindness, the goodness of their heart to serve somebody like me. And that's why in this organization, I will do anything that I can to see it grow and enhance. And now this is my home 15 years later as a grown adult married with a child and a foster mom and a career. You know, it's, it's intangible. It's, it's priceless. It's things you just can't put a price on. All right, we're back. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your participation so far. What a wonderful first segment out of three. We'll be back with David White in just a little bit. And I want to announce a winner from our Facebook contests that we have out there. Remember, just keep engaging with us. I'm sure Ryan and Lindsay's talking to several of you. And uh, congratulations to uh, someone who's taking home the Upcountry Provisions gift card and the 2021 Center Stage tickets. For those of you who are in our upstate area, it's a beautiful theater, and Upcountry Provisions uh, is a wonderful place that you're going to be able to enjoy. Congratulations. Who's going out that night is Kaylin Leppard. Congratulations, Kaylin. Thank you for your gifts, your giving, and your support of everything we're doing here at Fostering Great Ideas. Oh, here we go again. Maybe that was for Kaylin. I'm not sure. We just keep giving, ladies gentlemen. I don't want to get fired tonight, so let's do our job for the kids and the families out there who need it the most. Okay, so a few more things to give away. Now, reminder, I mentioned earlier about the Breckenridge trip. Let me give you a few more details. I didn't mention them earlier. It's a three-night stay at what we call the Moose Hoose. One of our great families out there has graciously donated this opportunity, and if you hit the threshold of giving at $600 tonight, if that's where you can come in and be a part of that, we're going to throw everybody in the pot for an opportunity to take that into your family. That includes round-trip airfare. So you want to get in on this level, I'm telling you. So $600 is our threshold for that one. Everyone who has given tonight and already has given prior to this is going to go in the pot for that. Thank you already for what you're doing there. Um, and uh, $600, just so you know, is the number that allows us to tutor a child for an entire year. What a beautiful gift. We hope you can be a part of that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have got pizza to give away, sidewall pizza. If, you, if you're in the upstate of South Carolina, if you know anything about that, and we've got stuff for you guys as well in Colorado and other places, don't worry, but 
right here at home where I live. Oh, we've got another one. And you know, I was told that this is important. When we see this graphic here, that means your gift was matched. Some of you have already known about the match that we have had over the course of the last couple of weeks and months. So it's a beautiful opportunity to have your gift doubled. Thank you for that. Thank you for our last gift. Oh, okay. We've done about $5,000 since I've been live. We have just under $20,000 to go. We appreciate your gifts. Keep giving right now. Okay, so this is what we're going to do for this one. Okay, you know what? Right now, we're going we're gonna to track it. The next person who gives any amount, $100 to Sidewall Pizza. A couple locations in the upstate. Thank you so much to our donors who've given all these great prizes. So we may have had it somewhere in there. So next one who gives right now. Okay. And we've got our outdoor and adventure package right here. So I've got a four-person tent and a hammock. I've been told that this is like an Eno, you know, the, the Yeti and hammocks. Um, the, I, I've not really been outside in a while, you know, but, uh, for those of you who are into that sort of thing, this is what you want. So how about this? I'm going to put parameters on this one as, uh, the next five people from the sound of my voice, the next five people who donate any level will be put in the drawing to win this great outdoor adventure package. Thank you so much for everyone who's giving. So just so you know, I'm coming in and out of this segment. Thank you so much to Courtney Crop. I think I've seen that name before. A reminder, you can give more than once tonight. Some of our gifts have thresholds. Some do not give more than once. Go ahead and text and get opted into that program. Remember, it's 41444, and your title is FGI4Kids. So congratulations to whoever already won this one. And uh, the next five for this right here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, when we come back, uh, we have got another great idea coming to us from Mr. David White, and uh, we look forward to you joining us in that zone. So let me, rem oh, let's check, let's check Facebook. Okay, Tina says it's perfect time for that camping gear. Is it, it love it? Yes. From a foster parent, John, thank you for what you do for the children who need it. Thank you, he says. Thank you, John. Um, you boys come off of all that money and help some kids out. Too, but so he got a laugh out of that. I love it, Nick. So call folks out. T t t tag somebody out there and let them know what's going on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to transition. I'll see you back uh, in just one second. And uh, we're going to keep the conversation going about the next great idea. I'm here with David White again to talk through the second realization. David, tell us about it. Second realization, uh, my sister had been taken from me at a moment in time that is a, quite a struggle. Of course. Yeah. So we decided at Fostering Great Ideas that we would help children re-engage with their family so they would feel secure. We first focused on mom. Have you mm -hmm. ever noticed, Jay Do, that Mother's Day is a lot more, you know what, than Father's Day? Yeah, it's a bigger uh, deal. We got to take care of mom. I'm st <laughs> amen to that, brother. All right, we'll do that. Moms Matter. We mm -hmm. called our first program within this segment, Moms Matter. We restore the mom. She's dealing with such such pain right now. Her mm. children have just been removed. Right, right. Yes, there was protection issues and all that. There was truly neglect. We want her to be held accountable to realize now how she can improve the situation, how she can let go of a brutal man 
how she can let go of a brutal addiction and then find a way to say, I welcome you back, my child. Because I'll, many I'll of be those families ready. are restored over a they period are. of time. Half of the yes. children will go back to their birth Wonderful. parent and generally their mom. The second concept within the family is so important. That everyone needs a family. Is It's all relative. Well, what about the dad? Often a non-custodial dad in this situation at this moment. What about the aunts and uncles and grandparents? Of course. It's, it's all relative. We bring you back in the game. We help you to learn how to let go of the anger and communicate it back and learn to help the child. The third is simply this, sibling. The name says it all. Now, sibling, that's, now those relationships with your siblings are yeah. the ones that last forever. So a lot of times, lifelong, even longer than mom and dad. That's exactly so right. So how, how do we talk about this issue? Well, we first off, as Foster and Gray Ideas does, we go to the statistics. Mm -hmm. We looked at sibling in 2015 in the county where we started over half, 56% of all children in foster care, when they were brought in, were really scary because um, I didn't know what was going on. Um, I didn't know that we were going to get taken away. I didn't know where we were going. I did worry about them a lot. They were, it was very important to me, like um, their happiness and like just being there and just, you know, reminding them that, you know, it's going to be okay. Um, like we're here, like, cause there was times like where we would kind of be scared and we'd be like, we're here. Like they don't know where we are. So like, it's going to be okay. And I was like, so like, you know, it's just going to be fine. And just like, just wait it out, I guess. Cause I thought that we would still go back to our parents. Wow, David, that seems really tough. It is very tough. So what is the solution to having a problem like this? Love it. Okay, so now we've got a great birthday surprise for a set of siblings here. We want to show you the moment of reconciliation where uh, the emotion just came out. So take a look right here and be moved just like we all were. These two sisters have not seen each other in over a year due to COVID. The older sister, who I see quite often, is constantly asking me when she can see her baby sister. She's worried about her because of COVID. She hopes she's safe, but she really, really wants to see her. So I was able to arrange a surprise birthday visit for the older sister's birthday, and I had the younger sister come up. She lives an hour and a half away to visit with her sister. It was a great birthday surprise. Come here, right here, and get my sister some outfits. Really? <laughs> 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 Now that seems like something to celebrate, David. It does. So why don't we have some cake here? It's not them. No, no. We'll have it through the plexiglass. Yes. Always safe. Thank you, <laughs> right. KTM Solution. And that happened. Yes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're out there thinking about your siblings, you know, you know, I have a personal story here is my father was adopted. My stepdad went through foster care. And having that connection to siblings is something that I understand from a third party mm -hmm. level from my parents. So, ladies and gentlemen, especially you who are on Facebook, able to chat, why don't you shout out about your siblings? I'm the oldest of six. And I love my brothers and sisters. Maybe you have some out there that you can tag. Go ahead and do that right now. And uh, let them know you love them. Let them know you care. And invite them to join us for Fostering Great Ideas' give -a -thon tonight. All right. Thank you, David. Okay. Why don't we turn uh, to another video here? And we're going to hear from an adoptive parent who's been able to use sibling, a couple of parents, actually, a couple of videos, who've been able to use sibling through the children that they've had care for. So, this is incredible, by the way. I just oh, okay, say yeah, that. I'm, I'm going to go Sweet ahead and take a bite. Cake and stop. from Brick Street Cafe. It's the best. We love them. We love them. Thank you. It's a very unique experience for me as a new mom. 
and, you know, stepping into my daughter's life when she was seven and trying to learn to navigate all of that. And then finding out that she had a sister who was a year older um, and, and I didn't know how to help them, you know, that they had, they had been apart for so long. They were having a hard time reconnecting and I didn't know how, I didn't know how to help them with that. And Latisse was able to step in with her experience and, and everything that she had seen and, and just really walk us through that one visit at a time. It was a complete change. When we first started visitation with the girls, um, they'd been apart for so long. They obviously missed each other, but they didn't know how to interact anymore. And a lot of what they would fall back to, um, it was difficult they really struggled. They didn't know how to connect with each other. They didn't know how to communicate with each other. They didn't know how to play. And so a lot of this had to be relearned. And, and a lot of these behaviors had to be um, talked through and coached through and just even giving them liberty to, to hug each other again. And, you know, to be able to sit next to each other at a meal and to laugh and giggle. And, you know, I remember one time Kayla putting ice cream on Rena's nose, <laughs> you know, and just being like, as a mom, just bursting into tears, you know, like that is such a sister moment. Like that's perfect. Um, and by the end of the year, that's what it was. They were sisters again. They were laughing and joking and sometimes getting on each other's nerves and all the beautiful things that come, you know, <laughs> that we all enjoy with our siblings and that they had just missed out on. It was amazing to me to see how reconnecting with her sister and building that relationship, um, it just grew her confidence and it helped her to, um, just to come back to us, you know, just to be able to like, there was this thing of like, you could always see her sort of below the surface and you knew she was in there, but she just held back. And the more we got to, to rebuild this relationship and, and spend this time together, the more I saw her coming out. I had a little boy um, that had four other siblings and they had to split them up because at that time there just weren't a lot of homes that could take you know, five siblings, the guardian at litem that we had, who was fantastic um, for our, for that county um, said, Hey, let me get in touch with sibling because you know, we want to make sure that these sibling visits are happening. There was always something different when they came back to tell me. So it wasn't ever like, Hey, we just sat in this room and talked. They were like, we did a craft, we played a game. It was extreme excitement and just joy. And like, happiness that you don't always get to see in the day to day because it's a different kind of experience when you're getting to spend that quality time with your brother and your sister. When they first came into care, they were withdrawn and like they didn't know us, they didn't have a connection with us and they were separated from, you know, their family. So being able to go to those visits on a regular basis and giving them something to look forward to decrease their behavior, decrease their stress because they knew we had it on the calendar. Hey, this day, this day, and this day, you're going to get to go see your brothers and your sisters. Y'all are going to do this. And it was something for them to look forward to. And they didn't feel like they were just being pulled away from everything they had known. And then no date or explanation or any end date in sight. They were given, you know, tangible opportunities to see those people and it definitely decreased their behavior and their anxiety. I think because of sibling, they were able to keep that bond. And so that when they transitioned back home, it wasn't like they were transitioning into a new family or into a different dynamic. It was the same dynamic and they had grown closer and they had appreciated each other. And it was because of the time that they were able to visit each other with the, you know, resource of sibling for sure. Thank you so much to Hannah and Crystal for those videos and sharing mm. your story with us. Thank you to everybody who's participated to make this uh, just a wonderful program. Thank you once again to the I didn't get through all of mine. I was listening to the oh, video. Oh, okay, okay. I got a big mouth. Though. Okay. You yes. got a pretty big one too. Though, well, so. I guess I do. Yes, sir. So um, it really does seem like it would just drop your stress level so much to know that you've got something you can look forward to that you're familiar with with a sibling you know, a visit on the calendar. You know, of our, of our staff members who have lived in foster care, mm. they all, Siblink is their number one program. Oh, really? Why not build this across the nation? 
we know that we've got it's that option to bring it mm. to anywhere all across uh, the U.S. So and and beyond even. Yeah. So let's let's go ahead and do that, okay. ladies and gentlemen. So at this time, why don't we transition? We're going to hear from Georgina again, one of our young adults, who's going to continue to share her story about her siblings and what she's gone through. I've been doing sibling visits for two years, about two years. I feel like sibling, like it makes us grow together and, you know, support each other. And without them, I don't know, like me and my sister don't have the closest relationship, but I definitely think it's helped me and my sister the most to get closer to each other. Foster care is definitely a struggle, <laughs> but sibling, makes it easier knowing that like um, I can still see part of my family and that we're doing it together and that I have people that will help us through it and to help me through it. It's definitely helps me to encourage, like I'm more encouraged to like ask them about things. And, like, Cause I know like, some of the stuff that my siblings tell me, they won't tell an adult. And sometimes I like, like, it just helps me in like builds more trust. It makes me feel like they trust me definitely. And it just makes me happy that they're telling me things. And, you know, I just try to give them advice on what they should do. Being able to grow closer to each other and knowing that if there's nobody else in this world, that we will all still have each other, no matter what. Ladies and gents, a few things to announce. We want to make sure you guys know how to give wherever you are at home, all over the country. I've mentioned a couple of key states that we've had great relationships with, but this just in, there's a lot of states out there I haven't mentioned. So big love to our folks in California and everywhere from here, coast to coast. Thank you so much. And uh, congratulations. Uh, this just in as well. We have given and chosen our sidewall gift card winner. That was a hundred bucks, remember? Congratulations to Hope C of Fostering Great Ideas. Hope, I don't know how to pronounce your name out there. I'd mess it up. You know who you are. And we love scroll around toward the bottom there. We've got several different giving options and that portal's always open for you. Please feel free to do that tonight or any other time. And for those of you who've got your phone in your hand, you can also go to this text message option as well. So here's the number, 41444, and here's the message, FGI for kids. It's not a set donation amount, so follow the prompts, and you'll be able to give at whatever level you feel comfortable. And if, ladies and gentlemen, you give at the level of $600 or more, we're putting you in that Moose Hoose Breckenridge, Colorado experience pot, okay? We're going to pick someone out of that pot, and we are also going to say that not everybody can win this, of course, but we've got another gift that's near that level. So $500 or more, if you're not able to give it six, do give it five. And everyone who gives it six who doesn't win the trip to Breckenridge is going to go in the pot for a set of Michelin tires. Thanks to our friends and family who've given it that, uh, that opportunity for us. Uh, we have got a set of tires here that's several different options for you. I roll tires myself. It's worth so much more than this, probably three times as much as that. So go ahead and give at the 500 or above level to be entered to win in that drawing, just in case you don't take home the Breckenridge trip. Okay, this right here. Oh, this is another great local flavor for those of you who've spent time where I live. Killwinds, downtown Greenville. We've got one free ice cream cone each month of the year, okay? So we got 12 different options for you here. Go back over and over again. And, uh, oh, it says here that our friends who are the owners at Kilwins downtown Greenville, are also foster parents. It's wonderful to see so much of the community involved what we do. We're going to talk more about the community here in a second. So, oh, this one right here. What I'm going to do, next person to give it any amount. Okay, I'm waiting for that bell to ring wherever that might be. We're currently at $132,000. Thank you so much. So exciting. We're still going for $150. Still a few more opportunities to take home some swag and some special gifts. 
if you are interested in giving tonight during the broadcast. So remember, next person to give is taking home a full year of ice cream fun at Kilwins. And uh, this one right here, we have got, oh, this is some of our Michelin stuff here, but I'm looking now for someone who wants some family fun time at the Children's Museum of the Upstate. It's a beautiful place. It's one of the Smithsonian kind of satellite spots. Great for kids and great for families in downtown Greenville. Right there on the corner of College and Academy. Some of you know where I'm talking about. We've got a family four-pack to the Children's Museum of the Upstate. And uh, the next five people who give any amount, any amount at all, we're going to put you in the pot for the family four fun pack. My kids love this place. My suggestion is, don't even take them inside. Just go to the backyard and hang out there. It's got a wonderful mission. There we go. Okay. We've got Gaston. Bo I don't know how to say it. You guys would do that. All you wonderful people out there giving all. I don't know how to say that name. We love you, though. God loves you. The kids love you. I just, Bougia, Boogie. Someone correct me out here. Okay. I'm looking down here at Facebook. Somebody sounded out for me. And uh, hello. We got Jaquan over here just saying hello in the chat. We love it. Hello, Jaquan. We love you. Thanks for being here tonight. Okay. Uh, reminder, text 41444, and the message is FGI for kids. It'll prompt you. You have options to give at any level, whatever makes you feel comfortable and whatever your heart desires. So if that's everything for this section, ladies and gents, we're going to transition back to a great conversation about another realization that David White has had to come up with a, a great idea for kids who need it the most. All right, David, so it's now time to talk about your third realization. Third realization. And just don't have it. We do. Foster care can seem quite complex, sort of like the healthcare system. We at Fostering Great Ideas break it down for you. We make it to where you can see where you can get involved as a volunteer within our tutor program, for example. Engaging with our siblings, helping them to know that they have great activities, donating to their work, expanding that across the states. There's so many different ways for you, the community, to get involved. What we found out in this final segment is that we need to educate community first. So our first great idea in terms of community involvement was education around who is the child. We call it life in limbo. It's a role play where you become the child in foster care. You mm. become the birth parent, their parent. You become their foster parent. One of those three roles you take on for an hour and a half of chaos, beautiful chaos, and restoration at the end of Life in Limbo, which is all across the country. It is our highest expansive program. It's even in Latin America. People respond with, wow, I never saw yeah, it seems like such an empathic approach that's so necessary. So we get the focus off of ourselves and put it on the people who we're serving. So well said. We have to get the focus of that cake off of our bellies right. and put it on somebody sure. else. It's the exact same thing. I'm not sure anyone really got that out there, but <laughs> hope you're enjoying the show. Our second concept within the community engagement was, it's called Speak Up. Advocacy, advocacy, advocacy. There is a lot of great national advocacy, but what happens at the state level? Do people once again understand what these children are saying? So one of our employees who has lived in foster care is over getting the youth voice out, getting the foster care alumni voice out, having them saying, this is what it was like, this is what I need. It's called Speak Up, and we have allies throughout that. And the third great idea is called Care to Foster. 
care to foster. All right. So before we get into how all that works, why don't we turn the tables and hear from a former foster child on um, her struggles with her foster placements. Great. When I first came into foster care, the emotions that I had, I was um, really, I was at fight or flight. I was constantly looking for a way out um, to run away or to go back to my family. Um, the emotions were fear, angry, hurt. Like, why did these people take me away? I didn't know. I didn't understand. No one was telling me what was going on. And I understand I was five. Um, but at five, going into the system, it's very, very scary. I have um, four siblings and I don't know them. They were adopted all out um, right then and there. They didn't get to experience foster care. I didn't like telling people that I was a foster kid, um, but sometimes they would figure it out, especially if I was with a different race. Um, it's just, it's overwhelming. Um, you do adjust eventually, or sometimes you don't. Um, I have, there's foster families that I've, that I still keep in contact with that I consider my biological family just because I don't talk to my biological family. I think we need to hear more about the pain that the average child in yeah. foster care is really going through here. It's really powerful. As you hear how Hannah said that her siblings were adopted, she doesn't know them, right? Right. I mean, can you imagine? The world of foster is so traumatically difficult for so many people. For the foster parent, nationally, only a quarter of all foster parents will stay in the game beyond two years. Wow, really? We're new. The turnover is incredible. What they want most, we heard it over and over in various states, is high levels of support. More than the governmental concept can provide, more than their agency, more than their churches even, which mm -hmm. provide a lot of great support, their faith communities. But how do they understand foster care in their community? How do they understand it as a state level? And how do they have a responsive tone as a singular unit of foster parents? And they say, we're going to be okay. That's what changes the turnover rate. All right. So how does Care to Foster help soothe the pain that's going on at this point? It doesn't fix everything, but we're doing our best. It doesn't we fix can everything. Doing our best. It allows foster parents to have voice. Mm. For the foster parents out there who are with us, I bet you, I used to be one. You wonder, am I even important? You wonder, am I just providing a bed? Are you respected? That is the key component for every child in foster care. It's also for every parent. It's also for every foster parent. Care to Foster says you are respected. You are incredibly important for this child. You're there 24-7. And then it takes it from a digital mindset to begin with, builds a community, a private community for the statewide grouping of all those foster parents to talk amongst themselves. And then it further cements it with ambassadors in every community saying, what are we coming, common, what is our common concern and how do we talk as one? Well, it seems like it takes a village. It so does. let's hear from some of those foster parents right now on the support that they need and some of the difficulties and struggles that they go through. We have had at this point, three kids who've come into our home and we've been fostering a year as of last month, when we first decided to, to restart fo our foster care journey, um, and I went to the agency that, that we're with, and I said, listen, one of the things that I noticed that I really need is kind of a support group, right? I need um, other people who can talk through this thing with me because I don't have any close friends who are fostering. So we're going to have the experiences that my friends can't relate to. When we were starting the foster care journey, um, being able to read other people's questions and get their answers was super important to me. Having someone that, to give me answers, to give me knowledgeable answers, um, to give me honest answers, I think is so important. Foster care is a journey without a map. And care to foster makes it 
a journey that you're not on alone. Fostering can at times feel isolating and lonely. And thanks to the Care to Foster support group, I have found my village. There is no time to feel lonely now. Um, thanks to these wonderful foster parents who, um, who join the call every week to support one another. Um, we share the good, the bad, the ugly, and just support one another. We celebrate together, uh, which is so fun. Um, and we also give each other space to deal with some raw, you know, real day-to-day -day realities that we all face as foster parents. I was recently contacted by a friend of a friend who was a brand new foster parent and she reached out to me looking for support and she didn't know any other foster parents. And so I was able to help her prepare for her first placement um, just in small ways. But I also invited her to join the Care to Foster support group, which she did the day she received her first placement. She was on that call looking for guidance, asking questions, looking for support. And the parents in this support group just welcomed her with open arms, um, sent her links to resources, gave her all the information that she needed specific to um, the questions that she had, which was just a great warm welcome for a new foster parent to feel that community love. So it was so nice during the pandemic, especially to connect with folks in the um, Care to Foster support group because Spending a few hours on a Zoom call together week after week, month after month, really became a deep-rooted, intimate type of support for one another, uh, celebrating the good and also sharing in the harder days. And um, it just, it really takes support to a whole new level that I had not experienced before as a foster parent. If Care to Foster didn't exist, I think that we would lose good licensed foster families who simply don't have the support that they need to keep going uh, without the Care to Foster programs. And um, I also believe that recruitment would be hindered um, because we work hard with Care to Foster on recruitment efforts um, because a huge uh, need in South Carolina is for more foster homes. I think we all need support like that, no we matter do. our situation. That's right. So uh, I think at this time, it's almost ready for us to transition into one more great story. Kind of summarize what we've learned so far here at Care to Foster. Hey, great. I'd say support is everything. If we just open up ourselves, if we're vulnerable for, to ourselves, mm. we pivot towards each other, we can create um, a new way. We can reimagine foster care. At every point in our all of our segments together, it's about opening up to what the child is saying, they do. The child is struggling, we respond. The child wants family, we respond. The child wants community, we respond. This is it. This is the platform called Fostering Great Ideas. I love what you've done so far and all of you out there. So let's transition and listen to Hannah one more time. She's got a great video to talk about the, some of the successes that have gone on in this program so far. I was constantly acting out, um, being very mean to staff, um, just wanting to run away. So they found a foster family for me. I, I, I attached to her like my grandma. I still call her my grandma. I still see her. Um, she was great to me. And I was just, I loved her. I was there for three years. The second foster family that was really great to me, I actually still live with them. They support me. Um, they helped me, encourage me to go to college. Um, they help me financially if I need it. Um, and he sees me as his own daughter and so does she. I mean, they're just great. So first, the foster family that I currently live with was just a foster family. It was just going into their home was just like any other foster family that I've been in. Um, but then it became so much more once I started attaching to them and gaining their trust and they gained my trust. Um, and now it's, it's more of, He's my papa and she's my grandma and we're just one happy family in one house. <laughs> Before I moved in with the brands, I felt very insecure about myself. Um, 
just because my whole life I've been told, you know, you're not going to amount to nothing. You're just a troubled kid. Um, you have issues. You're not going to go anywhere. But whenever I came here, he, he changed the view for me. Um, he helped me see, you know, that doesn't define you. I believe I'm worth it. Um, anyone is lucky to know me. I know it sounds a little conceited, but it's just, that's the way he's made me view myself. You know, I'm somebody, I'm loved, I'm cared for. All right, we're back, ladies and gents. It's here. It's J. Do here at Drum Creative, our studio. And uh, we miss you so much, but we're so happy that many of you have participated. I'm going to shout out to some of you all over the country and the world who participated. But first, I'm going to remind you that our Text to Give platform is open, and the portal and the door is always a green light for you to participate in the mission of what we're doing, reimagining foster care. What a beautiful way to think about caring and serving those who need it the most in their most vulnerable state, children who are separate from their family. So a reminder, 41444, put that in the number box and put this one in the message box. FGI for Kids, you can go to fgiforkids.org. That's our website. Go there and give. Uh, when we hit, when, because not if, when we are able to take this thermometer all the way to the top, you can see, oh, we're at 133.274 right now. We'd love it. We're looking forward to 150. And let me tell you a little bit about the stretch. We're looking forward to expanding one of our programs, something that's really needed all over. We might focus it right here for staffing for college fellows. Continuing the tutor program to help some of these youth make it to their next level of education. We know we're going to get there. We appreciate what you're doing. So, Thank you to all these great folks out here. I'm not going to say anybody's name because I'm going to mess it up. And we'll try to go over here. Uh, Tori, Lynn, we got some po folks being tagged here. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Well, we got a lot of people being tagged. We see Hope. Okay, Hope, I think I called you out a little bit earlier. Lynn's, okay, these are names I can pronounce. So we love you guys over here. Peter, Brandon, I can do those. Okay, so let's talk about some more gifts, ladies and gents. Okay, I want to... To, to bait you, to pull at your heartstrings, to help us get beyond 132, 133. Oh, we got another one right here. Remember, we've got a match that's going out. Thank you so much, Lindsay. And if you've already given, go ahead and give again. It's for the kids, all right? It's nothing but money. No big deal. 134000 I love it. Okay, so let's talk about this gift right here. All right, our friends at the BMW... Whoa, this mini COVID afro here is not allowing me to get... Okay, so the BMW, thank you, Beth and Ron. Okay, enough with the giving. Let me talk a bit more about prizes and giving. Well, I guess it's all the same. So we've got a $500 value for the BMW Performance Driving School. So it's kind of between Greenville and Spartanburg. Some of you may know of it. I've been able to participate. It is awesome. It is so fun. If you've ever wanted to crash someone else's Beamer, this is your opportunity. Okay, don't tell them I said that. Okay, so we're looking for the next $100 gift and above, okay? So if you're thinking of giving a million or a thousand, it's great, but $100 and above, we're going to hook you up with a $500 experience, the next one, okay? So this right here is one idea, but we've got another couple of ideas. We've got a local partner in an artist well-known across the upstate region. His name is Mark Mulfinger, and he's donated some wonderful items for us tonight. We've got, okay, maybe that was our $100 gift. Somebody knows what they're doing out there, but they don't want us to know who crashes the BMW. I see. Okay. Uh, Mark Mulfinger's got an art package um, and whole bean coffee from our friends at Methodical. What a beautiful place, downtown Greenville. So there's a couple things going on here. So we're going to let the next couple of people, how about the next three people, the next three people at a $50 level or so, we're going to pick between you three. So if $50 is on your mind right now, now's the time to go ahead and pledge or donate that money straight out and uh, get put in the drawing for Mark Mulfinger's Art and Coffee. Now, we have another one from Mark. We have another great print. Let me show you the prints here. A couple of prints from Mark that are here so graciously donated from our friend. Hopefully you can see that wherever you are. 
I can kind of see myself here. All right, so we've got um, olive oil here as well. I believe this is it. And uh, we're going to say that uh, if you get, okay, the next, the next, the, okay, we're going to keep it at $50, okay? So the next several people, we'll say five, the next five people who give at a $50 level or so are in the drawing for another piece of great artwork from Mark as well as this beautiful vintage, I don't know what year this is. Do they do that for olive oil? I'm sure it's 17th century olive oil. I'm sure that's a great thing. You guys know it. I don't. We're going to put you in for that one. $50 level. Love it. Some people know a lot more about olive oil than me. Okay. I love it. Now at this time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we announce, I had one special uh, downtown restaurant experience in the upstate given but as we think about that as we're looking at this number climb thank you so much for what you're doing i want to invite one more guest for a few words as we kind of close things out so we've got uh this year's board day here and a few more giveaways sure, that we're going to sure. announce here so why don't you start off start sure. us off and give us the good sure absolutely uh i i get the best part i give get uh give away the big prizes so uh We've got the uh, Michelin tires. Okay, so that was a five hundred dollar level, ladies and gentlemen. So the results are in. Okay, drum. It's what do you have for Jay us? Do. No, no, I'm no, just kidding. Really, I couldn't. <laughs> so, I couldn't. Well, no, no, Lenny, Lenny, Lenny Wildman, uh, really a, a friend of uh, FGI, and uh, congratulations. Congratulations, uh, Lenny. All right. Yeah. So those are the Michelin tires, several thousand dollars value on that, depending yeah. on which tires you go for on several different vehicle options. Congratulations. That was for folks at the $500 level. Right. So we're going to up the ante a little bit and That's go for right. the next one. And this is the best one. Uh, the uh, Breckenridge trip. The Moose Hoose, ladies and gentlemen, with round trip yeah. airfare. Who has this sitting around? Is this yours? Yeah. Uh, no. no. <laughs> the uh, and the great thing is you won't need tires to get there. So oh, the I, like, so, I like the yeah. way you think. So yeah. we've got Eric Mitchell. Congratulations, Congratulations Eric. to Eric. Very yeah. good. Yeah, well, appreciate what you're doing. Continue to keep up the great work. All Appreciate of you out there, please continue to give, okay? The fund's not over. You can yep. continue to give. The portal at mobile cost, for those of you who opted in and registered, will stay open for a couple of days. Don't think it stops tonight. Uh, there's still opportunity to support the mission and the vision of what needs to come for the next great 10 years. That's right. That's great. And uh, we certainly uh, want to thank all our sponsors. Uh, without you, this would not have been po possible. We have our uh, presenting sponsor was, uh, um, go through the list here, um, Jam Innovation Fund. And then our platinum sponsors, uh, you can see them there, Breakaway Honda, Cornell Dubelier, Fellowship Greenville, Skills Gap, Waypost, and World Acceptance. And then certainly our uh, gold sponsors and silver sponsors, you can see here, but we appreciate everything you do. Uh, couldn't have done this without you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So one more big giveaway, this just in. Thank you so much, Nate, for coming on set with us and being with us tonight. So our Table 301, several different restaurants. This wonderful restaurant group has done a lot of great things in our community and have a lot of great places. My favorite just might be the Lazy Goat, okay? So we have got a Table 301 cookbook, a dinner for two, and a bottle of wine going to, let's say, the very last person to give. It's not like that next point wins thing when we are playing basketball as kids. It's the last point. So if you're the last person to give while we're live tonight, we're going to hook you up with a great Table 301 dinner experience and a bottle of wine in a cookbook. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate so much what you've done tonight. The giving can continue. The love for foster uh, families and the children in their care over the course of the last 10 years has been wonderful. The expansion of the programs will only continue if you can reach down in your heart and learn to love and reimagine foster care for another great decade. It's Jay Do here, your host tonight for another great year in giving virtually for the great big giveathon. We hope you have a great night and God bless.